Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. In today's installment of Seahorse Aquarium, my visit to the Seahorse Aquariums, uh, the aquatic specialists in Dublin, Ireland, I have for you a look at the saltwater side of the business. Uh, this uh, this side, I think, is particularly dear to, uh, to Kaylin Doyle, the owner of the shop. You can see him here in a photograph and uh, just a, a, a very, very um, warm and kind individual, very knowledgeable, a marine biologist actually by training. And uh, his claim to fame, I believe, is being the first person to um, successfully breed seahorses in captivity, thus the, the name of the shop, uh, Seahorse Aquariums, uh, which is a little misleading and make you think that they, they specialize in only salt or sea or seahorses, but they have in fact a very wide variety of items, as you saw in the first installment, the freshwater installment of this series. But today, let's take a look at the saltwater, saltwater side of the business. Get ready to see some uh, stunning, stunning examples of saltwater fish, and uh, uh, and an octopus that is actually part of the cleanup crew of an aquarium. Very interesting. Uh, little creature that was uh, shared with me while in the shop. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Here's some more products that are uh, specific to saltwater. Let's take a look at their saltwater section and uh, see what they got going on back there. Here's some of the salivary testing and again when you have corals when you have five ten twenty thousand dollars in corals you don't take uh, testing you got to take your testing seriously here we are in the marine fish section and again immediately I'm impressed by how clean how pristine everything is Here's the fish that's used by Bulk Reef Supply. Beautiful fish. Another one here. Gotta love the colors and the patterns on these fish. This is quite possibly the uh, the nicest selection of saltwater fish that I've seen in a store, both in variety and in uh, in the condition, the overall condition of the tanks.
beautiful coral display, real difficult to capture the beauty of these corals with a lens. Well, let's put a pair of glasses on. Coral glasses help a little bit. See, with and without. Helps to bring out some of the colors. You can capture them with a camera. Normally you can't capture them with a camera. Bit quite very long, what you would call a low boy tank, full of beautiful corals. Very healthy fish swimming around in with the corals. Always a good sign. So these starfish are uh, not oh, a starfish that is stuck in one place all the time. No, yeah, these guys will openly move around as serpent starfish. So generally they're living under your rock, they're living in the craves and crevices. But what they're actually doing is they're gonna eat all that leftover food. So if you can see, if I put in the pellets, you can see right now they're nice and stationary. As soon as you smell a bit of food, start to see them. And the rummage. There we go, look. Set the smell it. Oh, look at that. And watch these guys on the left. Yeah, look. They all have a sense. They actually have a pretty color combination. Look at that. Very, very. We can see them all poking up all that food. Look at that. So these are. So this is a great cleanup crew. Oh, fantastic. Very, very underrated. People don't really see them. Oh, well, they don't think too much. You know, just a starfish. You see the amount of food I put in there? And already. Gone. Boom. So, as you can imagine, if you're feeding your fish, any leftover food that hits the bottom, no, no better guys for it. It's like a living vacuum cleaner. A dust, a dust buster. <laughs> Incredible. I didn't even know that, they, they, they would, that a starfish could move that way. I, have you seen her mantis shrimp? Uh, you know only in videos. You have one? I have a mantis. Oh, okay. So we have all the weird unusual here. Now I've heard a mantis shrimp can break. Yes. Can break glass. Oh, there he is. Uh, he's already getting fired up. They pack a punch. Oh, yeah. The Say famous, hello. The famous ma Oh, yeah, I heard that snap. We'll come again and we leave you alone. Holy moly! So if that caught you on a on a knuckle or something, you yeah, it's it. gone. It's gone. Yeah, it would break my knuckle pretty much easy. Were you gonna feed him as well? He's already got his food. Oh, okay. We'll see. Wow. You have order that he's a beautiful shrimp. Oh, he's amazing. The colors are like really are peacock type colors. So he's only shed recently as well. So he is a little bit paler than usual. Normally you get him a lot more reds and purples along that tail. And there's no concern that he'll break the glass. Well, as long as I don't annoy him too much. Right, stay, Once he's not overly irritated, he shouldn't. No, stay, on, stay on his good side. Exactly. And that, that's always my plan, you know? <laughs> These guys, I always say, it, it's easy to Just keep them fed and keep them happy. Like, you can see some of the puffer fish I have here, for example. The stars and stripes. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. And then I have a nice big guy up here. This is Chunk. His name is Chunk. I love the way they're interactive. Oh, they're like dogs. They really are. Yeah. That's why I like the African cichlids, because they interact so much. They're not afraid of you. No, not in the slightest. Especially when you mean food. And then we can see our eels and stuff down here as well. Never go wrong. So You got some lionfish. So I have some lionfish, I have some zebra, I have some dwarf, and I have some bolitans, and I have some eels. And I'm also brave enough to show the hand in, and we'll see a real coming out there. Hello. Come on out, buddy. Oh, there he is. That's a so beautiful So I thought it was quite finicky to put a skull in with them. Yeah. <laughs> but they're incredible creatures. Beautiful.
It's like something out of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, watching them come out of there. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And he doesn't bother the other fish. No, no. It's a, as long as it doesn't fit in his mouth or annoy him, he'll be quite happy. There's a very unusual guy. The walking garlic, you will not see him everywhere. A giant scooter, Benny. What a crazy looking fish. Looks like he's got a blue underbelly. Yeah, he does. Or a, an anal, anal yeah, fin. Yeah, the anal fin on it. And then he has a bright red eye. And you can actually see. Oh, two legs for walking. Wow. Very good. Beautiful. So they love this stuff. This is a Fatalis. It's a marine grazer. Beautiful. These are 19 year old yellow tangs. Incredible. And, and, the, and that, they, they look are, beautiful and healthy. Oh, they're fantastic. But also, they're not the oldest fish in the shop. Believe it or not. So I'm going to give them a little bit of food here. <laughs> so they know. They're all, uh, so come up and start kicking soon enough. And they're stuck playing around on the hair. Oh, they'll smell it. Oh, yeah. They'll smell it like those starfish did. Twenty-one. Twenty-one years old. Twenty-one years old. And this is called a lipstick tang? Lipstick or nasal tang. Twenty-one years old. Twenty-one years old. The old man of the shop. Yeah. Beautiful fish, too. Oh, it's amazing. Let me give him a little bit more grazing. Eating is such an indicator of fish health, is how they attack and Oh yeah, massive. Most important thing. Like I said, this whole thing is just water chemistry. After that, as long as the fish are eating, they're happy. You can see we recently, since it, since it was his twenty fourth birthday recently, we gave him a little present and we put a female in with him. So he has his little girlfriend. They're still getting used to each other, but she is around. <laughs> there she is over here. Oh boy. He said she's still getting used to the whole setup. That's the good. That's the girlfriend. That's the girlfriend. That's hilarious. She's a little younger. <laughs> oh, I imagine. She's probably just a few years old, probably. Yeah. So he's basically a dirty old man. Well, I mean, <laughs> they can live up to fifty. They can live to fifty well, years old. 50, wow. A lot longer, you know? longer than your uh, than your freshwater fish. Oh yeah. I think your frontosis can go 30 years. That's a long way. Yeah. But the rest of them are usually 5 to 10 years. Yeah, so. If you look at yellow tangs, you realize that they're only sexually mature, uh, you know, same as us, you know, it's incredible. Sexually mature at about, you said 6 years? 12 to 15. 12 to 15 years a yellow tang will be sexually mature. So before that, they're not they're not trying to breed them is, is pointless. Yeah. And obviously, we've had some very, very good success recently in the breeding yellow tangs. So which is fantastic because now you can actually get yellow tanks that are capital bred. Wow. Boy, look at that. Green like bubble coral. You can see where he gets his name. Oh yeah, beautiful. And there's the is it cousins? The other bubble coral without the colour. Absolutely beautiful.
So what did you think? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below and uh, let me know what you thought about their saltwater department. And if you're into saltwater, let me know um, what you what you thought about it. Did you think it was uh, it was well stocked? Would you buy fish there? Share your thoughts below. Always appreciated. Of course, if you like the video and you like what's going on at this channel, be sure to hit that uh, be sure to hit that like button and uh, the bell and let YouTube know that something good is going on here. All right, and I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Time. 9 a.m. Pacific and noon Eastern. All right, and stay tuned for a couple more episodes about my visit to Seahorse Seahorse Aquariums. That's it for me. Bye-bye.